To start from the beginning, if you implant a CRT device, we used to have bipolar leads. And one of the problems was when we find a position where the lead is very stable and where the lead can also pace, the problem is these two items are not happening at the same time, meaning the lead is stable but pacing is poor. You put, pull the lead back a little bit, pacing is wonderful, but the lead is unstable. And that was a problem that sometimes could drive you mad at implantation. So now we have leads that have four electrodes, quadripolar. We can put it in until they are stuck in a very stable position. And then we can select either some of the electrodes which are at the very tip, at the end of the lead, or some electrodes with, which are further down. So in the end, it gives you much more choice. Now, that's, that's just from the implantation side. The question, what are the benefits? And again, first of all, the benefits would be very, very practical. You can have a better threshold in more patients. And uh, even if the lead dislodges for a millimeter, then you just select some other electrodes and uh, the lead is still fine. You do not have to revise it. So that sounds again very you know, practical, surgical, not so much interest. Second thing that comes on top of that, uh, that the phrenic um, muscle has a very funny nerve, the phrenic nerve. And that nerve is basically can move um, as the patient moves, lying on the left side, on the right side, on the back. And so it can happen that the phrenic nerve comes exactly behind the left ventricular lead. And even if you have an implantation that shows you wonderful, you know, stable position, no phrenic nerve stimulation by the left ventricular lead, it can happen the next day or seven days later, the patient comes and complains because he has this funny feeling in his chest or in his stomach uh, as, as if he has a hiccup. And there's not really very much you can do. Some people do have very movable phrenic nerves while others have a stable phrenic nerve. So this can happen all the time. And again, if you have four electrodes to choose from, even if it happens, you can usually always select one electrode where frank nerve stimulation does not occur. So again, this is all extremely primitive thinking, um, but quadripolar leads became very interesting uh, when there were the first uh, analysis and showing quadripolar leads have much less revision need than bipolar leads and basically in almost every person you can find a solution even if thresholds are bad. Now, these again are mechanistic things. Interestingly, there was some uh, work done. Does that uh, translate into a clinical benefit? And it does, and it's very easy. If the lead is stable or can be used in almost every patient, you don't need to bring the patients back to hospital and do another operation. So the rate of rehospitalization was less in quadripolar lead and rehospitalization rate for heart failure and any treatment connected to heart failure is an important point. So that, that was the beginning uh, where quadripolar leads in fact started to have an impact on clinical thinking. Now there are now the, uh, several other issues. Uh, some studies could show that the resynchronization can be optimized if you can select from which point you want to pace. So you have on 3D echo or on tissue Doppler echo or other echo, um, you have better synchronicity, less dyssynchrony with the quadripolar leads. On top of that, you have some other benefits. You have more responders to CRT. Uh, in some studies, you do have a better QRS shortening. So one of the most maybe crucial parameters to show that uh, your treatment works is the narrowing of the QRS complex and uh, you can with uh, quadripolar leads reach a much better narrowing than with ordinary bipolar leads. And finally there are other issues, for example mitral regurgitation is one of the problems in heart failure and again if you have the choice uh, of the electrode in the left ventricle you can sometimes choose a better pacing modality that reduces mitral regurgitation better. So. There are a number of studies showing a benefit of quadripolar leads and this benefit is much more than the very beginning where we are just thinking of you know, finishing the operation successful, already that is fine, but now we have more responders, better resynchronization on echo, better resynchronization on ECG, less mitral regurgitation, so pretty, some pretty strong points for patients with heart failure. 
Well, this is now something very new. There are some very new studies showing that uh, what I just mentioned, in the end, if you have a group of patients that is big enough, may translate into a mortality benefit. And this is quite funny because it's difficult to show, you know, if you have a cable with one, two, three or four wires, you know, you would um, first say, well, it doesn't really matter as long as it stays where you put it. But in fact, it looks very much like if you can really select the optimal pacing site, and even if it is just some centimeters apart from the other pacing site, that may in fact convey a mortality benefit. From the first data, it looks very promising. And in fact, looking at the theory behind quadrupolar pacing, uh, I think it may be true. In fact, in sometimes several millimeters do make the difference between life and death. And it looks that this might be a way how patients with heart failure can even more effectively be treated with CRT. Yeah, that's another very interesting topic. In fact, there is by now one manufacturer who allows uh, that with a quadripolar lead, you can select two pairs of electrodes. For example, electrode number one and two, which are at the tip of the lead, and then electrode number three and four, which are, let's say, four centimeters uh, behind the tip of the lead. And these two pairs of electrodes can pace together against a right ventricular pacing electrode. So you have, in fact, not biventricular, but if you wish, triventricular or triple side pacing uh, from the same device. And the question is, does that um, have any meaning? Does it improve uh, synchronization? And that is not really clearly solved by now. But the very, very interesting point, we use only quadripolar for quite a time now, and as, as much as possible, in fact, multi-point pacing. Uh, and it's very funny and it's difficult to explain. Sometimes the conduction times to, let's say, the tip of the lead and then to a ring just one centimeter, 1.5 centimeters away from the lead have dramatically different duration. The question is, what does it mean? Uh, and it looks very much like it's uh, beneficial for the patient if we can select the point of the left heart that is usually uh, well, us uh, usually contracting latest. So if we have the longest duration of conduction and then we just take that left ventricular side, connect it to the right ventricular pacing side and maybe a third side somewhere else, and then we synchronize many different areas of the left ventricle together. And by that, the whole contraction time of the left ventricle can be much better synchronized. And again, it is not yet clear. There are not enough study data. But it is likely that multipoint pacing conveys an even better um, benefit for patients with heart failure treated with CRT.